we'll move into gyan yog so we'll take the first stream and get into the depth of it okay gyan so what is what is gyan uh, gyan translated as knowledge uh, knowledge also if we go to the etymology of knowledge now it comes from the word know and the word no means to identify or to recognize so to us hence knowledge means knowledge only comes from experience knowledge doesn't come from books it doesn't come from uh, reading listening it only comes from experience even when we look at it from a english standpoint and same is what the word gyan also means that it is what we experience and this is also repeated quite a few times that by reading the scriptures you won't get gyan it is by experiencing only that we get gyan or knowledge and that is what this path is about yeah so the very very important to i think understand this word gyan itself because that's the biggest our education system has sort of uh the modern system has made us believe that when we read we answer a paper we have gotten the gyan or knowledge we have become a gyani but it is only experience which which is gyan which is knowledge okay so what is the process what's the inside out process one of the inside out processes inside out right from our swar right what can we anchor ourselves in as we think of gyan yoga as a process uh, of yogification is the question who am i and this is what uh, raman maharshi ji completely sort of works on this uh, he just says enquire into this question who am i an experience that i so once you know the i that's when you have become a gyan yogi so who am i anchor yourself so constantly ask who is doing this who is thinking is it this body is it this mind and that's how this process basically works of trying to know who am i the theory of course is that there is only one absolute truth to know right that's our brahman it's called atman swa ishwar anandmay kosh soul spirit that's who really am i the rest is all delusion created by the tamas that's there which is its property so if you enquire through that and realize through the process of neti neti that neti neti means not this na iti not this not this so as you evaluate everything you will realize i am not this i am not this i am not this if you keep this inquiry and you experience then you will say this is all subjective because if you think i am the body then who is thinking body is not i then it's a mind then who is how do how are you aware of the mind who is aware of the mind and that is the inquiry as you can't start doing then you realize i am not the mind i am not the body and that is the process of neti neti so this is the process that's talked about for gyan yog this is the inside out process of gyan yog the inquiry into who am i okay and behind this of course is the rig veda uh, statement ekam sat vipraha bahuda vadanti so there is only one truth ekam sat bahuda vadanti but people call it by different names bahuda vadanti in a classic uh, story here uh, i don't know if you have heard but basically uh, there were six uh, blind people there were six people blindfolded or you can call them as uh, blind people and they went into a room and they started uh, feeling through their hands and describing what they were 
uh, experiencing so the first person said oh i am i am experiencing a fan uh, the second one said i am experiencing a, a pillar and uh, the third one said i am experiencing a pipe uh, the fourth one said i am experiencing a, a comb and then their blindfolds were removed uh, of the four people and and then they all said oh we are seeing an elephant right so one was touching the ears like a fan somebody was touching the uh, the the trunk like a pipe the feet like a pillar and the tail like a comb so it's it's just our experience of that is limited based on our senses so like you see it the same thing is experienced differently described differently by people and that inquiry into who am i just inquiring into yourself more and more that gets you to the ultimate truth that's the process of gyan yoga inside out the whole unit of gyan yoga the one whole unit right how it is in the description how the gyan yogi experiences the cosmic intelligence the vigyan mai the connection most often and i think again with the kvi no claim this is the only way is just the most common way we've come across is peace and one can experience this through the recitation of the shanti mantras that we do and we do this every class at the beginning and we start with that we end with that so that shanti is the experience of the whole unit through the process of gyan to this process of knowing ourselves okay so that's peace and that's the whole unit of the gyan yoga process <clears throat> and what's the outside in process right and i'll spend more time on this because we will use this more as a tool uh, of gyan yoga what's the outside in process of gyan yoga so gyan yoga they describe there are three steps uh, to the process of learning uh, right to the process of knowing uh, something fully right so the three steps are shravan mannan nidhi nidhi dhyasan nidhi dhyasan so shravan is listening and reading this is the first step often times we just stop here right and we think we have become knowledgeable but this is the first step shravan this is what you are doing right now what you keep doing which is reading listening to talks and that's a very important step it's the starting point of knowing but it doesn't stop there the next is manan very important reflection creating our own coherent viewpoint right this is where also uh, a lot of questions come and the suggestion of the gyan yoga process is to try and resolve those questions within yourself if the question still stays you can ask others get their thoughts also but finally you have to create your own coherent viewpoint right at this stage it could be in consultation in discussions with others but the viewpoint is your own after reading listening questioning getting all the answers uh, that you see but finally you create your own viewpoint own coherent viewpoint and what you are seeing and what you will see in this course is some of the viewpoint that we have created but it's all open so the idea is that this is not the final viewpoint whatever we are sharing is not the final viewpoint you can create your own go back to the original read and 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 create your own viewpoint but the third step is the most important after this once you create your viewpoint apply it to your life apply that viewpoint in your life see what happens with that when you apply work with that do it right and be willing to learn and iterate so what comes up you had a hypothesis you thought if i do it this way this will happen see what comes back and accordingly modify 
right so that's why this is the outside in process where you are first you are operating in the field you are basically learning from the field through the scriptures uh, through people talking to them creating your viewpoint applying it learning back and in this way synthesizing step by step anchoring yourself in the question possibly who am i but in general to learn anything anything this is the process because only when we apply in our life we iterate we experience and when we experience that's only when we gain knowledge we learn we have gyan because gyan knowledge is about experiencing it's not about reading and knowing concepts so this is the outside in tool of gyan yoga and the invitation to everyone in this course is to apply this this principle in life and when you apply this you are a scientist a yog scientist this is what a scientist does right don't take anything at face value don't think anything said in this course or any scripture any book as face value experiment make your own experiments we will suggest some uh, and we will i'll lay that out after this make your own experiments if you may but experiment and in this experimentation you are the experimenter you are the instrument for measuring it you are being measured all that is within you it's a very self contained experiment you don't need any fancy equipment nothing you you have yourself so and your life experiment and that's being a yog scientist that's what every yogi has done uh, and that's how they have reached where they have reached been able to access that kind of yeah knowledge that's true knowledge that's what you experience and that's the invitation uh, in this course uh, to do to follow this process we will use this process right throughout the course to experience and to know hence because otherwise it will just be bunch of theories and and everyone will be able to really bring out their own knowledge uh what they have experienced what you have experienced that's what really matters right in our life only thing that matters is this one thing all statistics fall if you are the one which doesn't follow it right so what matters is what what is what works for you at some level so that's the invitation and that's what the gyan yog process of yogification is all about is to follow this process to learn uh learn about ourselves learn about whatever we want to learn learn about the process of yogification also so we will apply this to that process sandeep hi i have a quick question sure uh where does uh, no expectation or detachment uh, sit within these three concepts so uh simply put it doesn't directly sit that's that is a concept which you should apply nidhi dhyasan to and learn and see if that concept holds ground uh, but that's the principle of karma yoga and we will deal with it in depth when we cut to that chapter okay thank you that so much that is the path of yogification but not the gyan yoga path it is karma yoga okay okay got you thank you sandeep a follow up question on what let's say rajni said mm-hmm. now you read Uh, some books or you attend sessions like this which is covered in shravan then we do manan where we have our view point ki this is what i should do but to gain the it's still not converting into experience so unless i do something i will not get experience so isn't that again karma yoga or uh, why do we need these as different is my question are aren't all they connected of course i think that's the first they are connected they are going to the same goal right the nuance yeah. is in the process so in and we will as we look at each process we will come to that so here in gyan yoga the unit is learning the unit is are the process of learning right in karma yoga the unit is actions so there you don't you may not read anything in karma yoga right there is no shravan manan you will just do and learn maybe right so the slightly different principle so that's where the path will differ a little and 
you combine the paths also that's also said you can combine it's not you're not doing one path in isolation karam yoga with jnana yoga with bhakti yoga whatever works for your temperament whatever works for you that's the idea okay so we'll just take one path at a time so we can understand them but when we apply we will apply most of us will naturally apply a combination very few are like pure one path people yeah. particularly jnana yoga to is very very rare is what they say very very rare. Yeah. and uh, to make that real like you said for experience we will uh, share certain experiments that uh, that have been designed that we have used in our practice uh, as a indication so you can try it out also yeah that's what this course will be as i said we will go through this outside in a uh, process of uh, gyan yog right throughout the course so every every class we will define a an experiment Uh, an activity that you can do which is related to the what we have learned on that day uh, so you could apply it and learn from it yourself so we will do shravan on that during the class uh, there will be time for manan reflection like a little bit we have done now and then there will be an, a nidhi dhyasan suggested which we would want invite you to practice uh, try it out at least uh, for a week ideally longer and see how how that principle evolves for you what is your experience of the principle how you want to modify it etc all that will happen yes so to summarize this is that table now coming back uh, so to summarize the whole unit of experience of gyan yoga process is shanti is peace the unit that we are working with at the whole right which we are working with is knowing so we are working how this sees at the field level is knowing the process of learn knowing the process of learning some of the laws right we saw one which is there is one absolute truth and the rest is all subjective knowledge this is the law this is the this is what a gyan yogi says and believes in completely as the law now each of the upanishads of ours right there are 108 known 10 are the most uh, uh, sort of major upanishads as they are known uh, they have their specific laws each one has defined so each upanishad is a different take by a gyan yogi on this process so each upanishad defines more specific laws so for example uh, looking at om as a u ma is a whole process that's defined in the mandukya upanishad for example so it defines the laws related to that and uh, prana upanishad uh, defines about prana sorry prashna so different upanishads will talk about different taittiriya upanishad for example talks about the panchakoshas so different upanishads talk about the same absolute truth and their their law is slightly different in different ways they will take it right and similarly they will have different tools and technology so upanishads become the real source of knowledge on this so for example this shravanam manan nidhi dhyasan has been taken from the brihad aranyaka upanishad mandukya upanishad has things around om isha upanishad has harmonizing dualities uh, how do we do that kena upanishad is from a certain kind of enquiry on by whose will does the mind move raman maharishi his enquiry is into the question of who am i as we see so if you pick up different upanishads we'll get different tools and technologies on this path so people who are interested in this path i would encourage them to see if you want to read upanishads and the, do the read their commentaries of course to understand these tools a little bit more if this is the path that you want to move ahead the dualities that we see here are around good and bad right and wrong there's a lot to do with our discrimination Uh, what we are choosing in this course uh, for this as we said is we are choosing this outside in process of shavan manan nidhi dhyasan uh, being anchored in peace and we will do this right throughout the course and when we say we are choosing means there will be nidhi dhyasan on this itself so we will experiment with this process uh, throughout this course to see if this process really works right this process of learning works and create our own view on what how it works for us uh for me rather for each one of us individually what is this process how do i learn 
does this work for me? How can I make it work for me? What is my learnings around this? So there will be a meta process, if you may, on that, that will run on this specifically. What are the texts for reference if people who are interested? Uh, it goes with these three, the Upanishads, as I said, each one of them uh, is rich in itself. There are the Brahma Sutras uh, and there is the Bhagavad Gita. These are the classical texts, modern texts, uh, people who are interested. Uh, I have found Swami Chinmayanan's work very, very uh, useful uh, on this. And of course, there is Swami Vivekanan's lectures on Jnan Yoga itself, uh, which gives that uh, also description quite well. In fact, in the Gyan lectures, it's mostly he is taken after some point, he starts taking one lecture on each Upanishad, for example, and describes that a little bit more in detail, all of that. So that's the uh, lay of land on Gyan Yoga. 